Let's lock in here. Scariest Snapchats people have ever received by Mr. Nightmare. Snapchat has become a staple in today's social media world. It's a convenient way to contact friends and keep in touch with people. But as we've seen over and over on this channel, there can be a few privacy concerns if you're not careful. Let's just jump right into it and look at three disturbing snaps people have received and their backstories. For the sake of the person who sent me this, I'll refer to her as Maria. Mar I'm assuming these Snapchats are going to be like, you're just chilling in your home, you know, maybe texting your friends. You get a Snapchat from Derek. You haven't talked to Derek in 10 years. Or not 10 years, two years. And the Snapchat is just of you. That would be fucking terrifying. That's what it's going to be. Maria has an Instagram account with 5,000 followers, which is a decent amount, and so she gets a good amount of attention on her profile from men. Maria has a boyfriend who has not appeared in any pictures of hers on her Instagram. Maria also had her Snapchat username in her Instagram bio, something a lot of people do to allow their acquaintances and friends to add them on the app with ease. This can also open the door to unwanted contact, though. Although she didn't add everybody back who added her on Snap, she at one point had her privacy settings set to allow all people to send her messages and snaps, even people she didn't add back. So Bro, ain't got a bitmoji though? That's nuts. That's how you know they're a murderer. Privacy settings set to allow all people to send her messages and snaps, even people she didn't add back. So, somewhat often she'd receive messages and snaps from random guys, usually guys that followed her on Instagram. In her words, often older and <laughs> creepy looking. But according to her, even younger guys manage to look creepy by taking weird angled selfies in dark rooms. Usually the snaps were pretty harmless like this, but one day she received a snap that would lead to her getting the police involved. Maria lives with her family but often stays at her boyfriend's first floor apartment. This location is not known to anybody except for her close friends who know of her boyfriend, making it all the more disturbing when she received this snap. Jesus Christ, dude, that fucking noise scared the fuck out of me. Is that somebody outside her window? No way they actually use the real Snapchats she got. It all the more disturbing when she received this snap. It was a picture taken through the window to her boyfriend's bedroom. At the time the photo was taken, it's hard to see it in the dark, but Maria was in the bed napping, and her boyfriend was in the living room watching football. There was no caption to the Snapchat, making it appear to be some kind of subtle threat. Maria didn't open the snap until much later in the night while going through snaps she'd received from various people she didn't know. I would murder them. If they, like, if somebody sent me that, bro, like, like you're telling me, like, she just fucking opens this? What does she do later? Like, like, she is she going to the cops being like, oh, yeah, some dude just sent me a picture of my own fucking house. By this time, it was a couple hours after the snap. Or not had even been own sent. house, in their house. She panicked and screenshotted the snap. I'm shooting them. I'm literally on the spot, they're dead and showed it to her boyfriend. From here, he replied to the account on her phone, asking who is this. Upon adding the person back, they saw the account had a pretty high snap score, which for those of you who may not is know- Is this his actual Snapchat? A person's snap score represents how many times they have received or sent a snap. This account having a snap score in the 50,000 range meant it wasn't likely just a random spam account. The person replied, John, LOL. Maria's boyfriend replied back, we're calling the police, and John replied, okay cool, let me know if you need help calling them. After this, the account blocked her, and the couple were left to wonder who this person was. A search through Maria's Instagram followers turned up multiple Johns, but with no last name on the account, it would simply be a guess as to who it could be. That same night, as the couple was sleeping, a crash from the living room woke them up. Dude, they gotta stop with the jump scare shit, bro. Come on, just fuck it. Just tell the goddamn story. That same night, as the couple was sleeping, a crash from the living room woke them up. As Maria's boyfriend ran to check the source of the noise, he found it was the dining room window, which had been shattered, and on the floor was a house brick, presumed to have been taken from a house being renovated down the block. If the couple didn't have a case before, they definitely did now, and they called 911 to report the incident. Now that a police report had been made, police would subpoena Snapchat for information on this person's account in hopes to locate the person. 
the couple was assigned a detective to their case who was supposed to help in identifying the mystery person. However, as the days turned into weeks, little to no information was given. It did become apparent, however, that the Snapchat account had been either deleted or banned because it no longer came up under search results. Currently, Maria and her boyfriend have no idea who this person was, and any thought of it being a prank by a friend was out the window when their window was literally shattered by a brick. It can boil down to a stalker being jealous of her boyfriend, but this would also mean that Maria was followed to her boyfriend's house. Stop saying it was John Pork! And that the perpetrator would know where she lives as well. Luckily, with security cameras becoming more prevalent on houses... Oh, I was gonna say, did they not have security cameras? Like, if they had security cameras, they would just see the dude fucking breaking the window. ...of crimes are becoming more difficult to get away with. But in cases like this, where there's an absence of any cameras, unfortunately, people may still be able to pull these kinds of crimes off. Three months later, and Maria and her boyfriend haven't seen any new activity at either of their homes. Oh, God. Don't tell me they were in the house. That would This be next story comes terrifying. from a college student named Tom from the University of Kentucky. Tom shares his location on the Snap Map feature, which if you've been around my channel for a while, you know how things can sometimes turn out with that. Tom lives in a house off campus with four friends in a downtown area by a bunch of bars. The squad of guys often walk to and from these bars at night on the weekends. The night in question was no exception. Tom was on his way home from a nearby college bar about a 15 minute walk from the house. At some point while walking home, he was on a quiet residential street with woods on one side and he heard someone walking behind him. He turned to see a man holding out something in front of him, walking about 10 meters behind him. He couldn't tell what he was holding. I'd already hit the dash. I'd already hit the dash. It's fucking in the middle of the night. Some dude is following me from not far away from me and he's holding something. I'm running. As fast as I fucking can. Especially since he's gonna fucking see where you turn in. Sniper and Nebzat for the sub. But he didn't stare for too long because he didn't want to draw negative attention to himself. He noted that something about the sight of the man seemed ominous, though. The man was behind Tom for a while, until he turned to the block with his house on it. At some point before making it back, the man was no longer behind him. At least not that he thought. It was only after he made it back inside the house that he got a notification that he received a snap from his friend Luke, one of his housemates, who was home at the time. Luke had lost his phone that night, though, so received- Oh, hell no! How did he know that was the fucking friend? Oh my god, the guy has his fucking phone? Having a snap from his Snapchat account meant that somebody had his phone. Tom called his housemates downstairs before opening the video. He also turned a screen recorder on to capture the snap, and this is what they saw. Nah, this looks fake as fuck. <laughs> Nah, this looks fake as fuck. You're telling me somebody would actually do that? Nah, you're telling me- Nah, this looks fake as fuck. Nah, the way he turned around just looks so fucking planned. Bruh, he just went. The snap was a video of Tom walking down the street towards his house. It was the man he had seen walking behind him, and what he was holding out in front of him was apparently Luke's phone. They had the idea to check the location of Luke's phone on the snap map, since he had his location enabled, as did Tom. The location of his Bitmoji was last updated nine minutes ago, and its location was right on top of their house. Oh! Stop! Stop! No, see, now that's fucking scary. Oh my god, they're watching the video, he's right next to them. Oh. So the three guys who are currently home ran around the entire property with all the outside lights on to light up the area. They didn't oh, I'd be find ready to fucking swing. ...find the man with the phone. But oddly enough, Luke's bitmoji moved just a tad as it updated again. Yet it was still on top of the house, meaning whoever had the phone had to be somewhere that they were overlooking. After a while, the guys thought to lock the phone using the Find My iPhone oh feature. Oh my god, don't tell me he's inside, stop. ...and then have it play a sound. When they did this, they were confused to hear the beeping sound of the phone coming from inside the house followed by stomping of someone's shoes and the front door slamming shut. 
Luke's beeping phone was still inside the house, but instead of going straight for that, the three guys ran outside to chase after whoever just ran out the front door. By the time they made it out onto the street, they had no idea which way the person went. They were out of sight and they could have been hiding anywhere. After checking the neighbor's yards, the guys went back inside to retrieve Luke's beeping phone, and Tom claims they found it right in the pantry closet, meaning the man was hiding in there for however long. At first, one could have maybe assumed that the person who had the phone was trying to Why? Why would they do that? ...return it, until it was discovered that that person was literally hiding in their house. Assuming all the details in the story are true, if I had to guess, the man who had stolen Luke's phone knew who he was somehow and was following Tom through his Snapmap Bitmoji location. Yeah, I was gonna say, how would he know that that was his roommate? ...all the way up to their house. There are some missing details, though, like how the phone was stolen, what the method of entry to the house was, and if Luke and the rest of the guys in the house had any I'm sort of- I'm feeling that this is fake just from the fucking video, dude. Just from- just from this video, it's just- it, it looks like they planned it. Enemies or people out to get them. No police action was taken, apparently. The first one looked real. In 2015, an Australian Redditor with username Skinna555 took three Snapchat videos of his parents' exotic birds and put them on a Snapchat story. What followed next was downright disturbing. Skinna and his girlfriend recently moved into his childhood home with his parents while their own house was being built. Skinna's parents owned three Australian parrots, and one night while he was home alone, he uploaded three Snapchat stories showing off the birds, since many people always asked about the birds. Right, so the first one of my parents' little birds is this little guy. It is little Leo. He's a cockatiel. Leo. The second little bird uh, of my parents is a rainbow lorikeet. His name is Oliver. And there he is. Why is he doing this? Can I ask that? Like, I, I just want to ask, like, the validity of these stories, because who the fuck would be doing an in-depth story of their fucking birds? Well, this is little Leo. I've had him, well, my parents have had him for about, yeah, now three, four years now. Like, why, who is he, is this going on his story? People who love their birds. Okay. Riptide for the sub. Yeah, for, for the mass audience of his friends that love the, the birds he has. Sniper and Nemzet for the sub. And here I am, with my good little mate. Puffin. About 15 minutes after uploading the videos to his story, Skinna receives a text from one of his friends. And at the bottom of it, it says, By the way, what was that in the window behind you in the last one? So after what? seeing this text, he went to rewatch the clips a couple of times and opened them on his computer to get a larger and clearer view of the videos. In the last snap, it almost appears as if someone is at the door, looking in with their hands cupped against it. Oh my god! But it's hard to say for sure because of how briefly the door is in the frame. Oh, oh dude, I'm such a bitch. Oh my god, that scared the fuck out of me. Oh, dude, it's the noise. It's the noise. It's not even, dude, if he just fucking zoomed in like that, I wouldn't have been fucking nervous. Oh, that scared the shit out of me. Oh my god, that scared the fuck out of me. Ant Sawyer for the five gifted. Think of the fucking subs. Holy shit. Oh. But whatever it was. Nah, that don't it look was like a person. Does that look like a person? Cupped against it. But it is that a person? It's hard to say for sure because of how briefly the door is in the frame. But whatever it was, it was not in the first snap when that same door was in full frame. Skinna was home alone at the time, and to add to the mystery, that door led to the backyard, which was only accessible through a single gate which had been locked. The theory that it might have been a reflection doesn't hold up, because the sliding glass door was half open, and all that stood between the figure and the inside of the room was the fly screen door, which would not have been able to cast any reflections. Whatever was at that door moved in the matter of seconds that passed between the first and third snap. When Skinna was a young child, around 10, he started to commonly experience sleep paralysis, which could get so intense that he'd find himself often not being able to breathe for short periods of time. And this led to a fear of sleeping for him. 
a couple years went by and his sleep paralysis tendencies would worsen. During his episodes, he could not move and felt like something that meant him harm was in the room with him. Yo, can we skip this? That fucking sucks. I, uh, no, like, uh, the first two seemed real and then this one, it's like, why was he showing his birds? Why was he showing his birds? I want to read the comments. The third story never gets old. Oh, God, I feel like uh, everybody's saying the third story is good as fuck. I feel like we should fucking read it. Or, or Nah, I'm not going to watch it out. The third story was entirely fabricated. It was por posted on r slash no sleep. Yeah, exactly, dude. Oh, my God. I still kind of want to watch it, though. I still kind of want to watch it, though, because now that means it's probably going to be really scary. Let's watch it. With him. Around the age of 14, he started to hear and see things like thuds and creaks. However, he always had one recurring vision, a faceless person looking in his bedroom window with their hands cupped up to the glass, similar to this image caught in his snap story. When he moved out at age 18, he never had another episode. So for a few days after these snaps, nothing happens. But come Friday night, Skinner found himself home alone again. Oh God. At around 10.15 p.m., while playing games on Steam with his friends, he starts to hear some relatively loud banging, loud enough that he could hear it even through his headset. It was coming from the screen door outside. He got up to film the sounds using his phone. The noises got louder and more frequent. Instead of outright opening the curtains and potentially finding himself face to face with someone on the other side, he walked through the kitchen into the laundry room to turn on the outside lights. Like I mentioned earlier, there's only one entry and exit to the backyard, the left side of the house through a locked gate. So with the back lights now on, he went over to a window that looks out to that one exit of the backyard. While waiting and expecting to see someone rushing out of the yard, a loud noise can be heard from outside on the opposite side of the house. He aims the camera at the- Stop! Why is he going so fucking slow, dude? Oh my god, just fucking swing that shit. I'm rushing their dumb ass. I'm rushing that motherfucker. Oh my god. Second I hear that shit, I'm gonna be fucking sprinting. <sighs> ...window for a few moments, then turns on the kitchen lights, and seconds later, stops recording. He kept all the lights on until his parents returned home. He uploaded the videos to Reddit, and people started to help in examining the videos. After a few Redditors enhanced the videos, a big mess in the corner was revealed in the dining room. The figure begins to resemble a person. And to make it creepier, that figure is not there at the end of the video. Recording. Help in examining the videos. What? After a few Redditors enhanced the videos, a big mess in the corner was revealed in the dining room. The figure begins to resemble. You would notice. You would notice them. Were locked from the inside when they came in. So how exactly would these guys have gotten in? You would fucking notice that shit. Oh my god. Like, I, yeah, now that one seems fake, dude. Oh, my God. All right, we'll watch one more.